Welcome to Edify by the Word. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. Episode number two, government of, by, for, the people shall perish. The themed passage is going to be Psalm chapter 90, the entirety of it. But before we jump in, let's get into some context of what the word will be discerning. I'll be reading for you something that hopefully a fair number of you recognize. It's actually quite short. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We come to dedicate a portion of it as a final resting place for those who died here, that the nation might live. This we may, in all propriety, do. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground, the brave men living and dead who struggled here, have hollowed it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember, that we, sorry, what we say here, while it can never forget what they did here. It is rather for us, the living, we here be dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to the cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve, these dead shall not have died in vain, that the nation shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. There are a number of you surely and hopefully already surmised that this is the entirety, also known as the Nicolay copy, President Lincoln's sec- personal secretary, of the Gettysburg Address. So what is, in- so why is this- what is important about this? Why was this read in its entirety. Well, you've looked at the title, and I omitted a very simple short word. And that's what Psalm 90 is going to be about in regards to our current situation. For there are three reasons of which Holy Scripture amply gives that we sadly, on this side of heaven, cannot hold dear to the conclusion of this address for there are three realities at hand first off that man has sinned and has continued to live according to well well living dare I say it in death in their sins our sins secondly as Arya alluded to in the first, we die. For the president said at the beginning, four score and seven years ago, that's, well, that's the long end of a man's lifespan. Now is it? And that's also what's stated in this book as well. And there's also the third reality. That because of the first two, no government shall survive, nor remain uncorrupted. And we must rely on the will and the sovereignty of the Lord God and the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was actually last year. Or was it last year? My goodness, time flies by so fast. No, it wasn't. (laughs) It was a few years back during the midterms. I made two videos that you can find on the BitChute channel. 
about the Arizona midterm elections, in which I showed that using document evidence from both major political parties, their platforms, and the, and the campaign websites, to show that overall, their agendas, their goals, their plans, essentially the same, different emphasis of means, difference in priorities, but similar if not the same goals. And you see much of that to today. In fact, uh, to this very day, both sides are trying to paint each other as polar opposites when that's further from the truth. Be, you know, being from still Arizona, I heavily emphasize that of the Republican side, the right wing, because, well, anybody who's been paying attention at all notices that the left wing slash Democrats no better in some ways, no worse. Because amorality as well as lukewarmness is just disaster waiting to happen. It's just evil and death accumulating to the destruction of a nation, of a, of a people. But that's the thing, though. This isn't about black pilling or white pilling. This is about the gospel. For in Psalm chapter 90, first three verses, you see, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. Well, return to what? Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. Well, ultimately, what's the end of man on this side of heaven comes to our destruction? You go back to the book of Genesis, chapter 3. After all our toil, our blood, sweat, and tears, man shall die and return to the dust of the earth. And so I have to say, once again, not with utter disrespect and total contempt for the words of our former president, Abraham Lincoln, but just as a matter of the truth. His address is unfortunately in, in vain. For in the end, it is the Lord God, Jesus Christ, who will have to make all things right. Who will have to make sh that, indeed, that everything was not in vain. Our human efforts, unfortunately, I say unfortunately because we strive and we try. And yet in the end, as the Lord says, our good works are but filthy rags. But despite his grace and mercy, verse 1, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. There is hope. But do not put your hope and trust in man, in our institutions, and especially in a government, supposedly, and for the short term. Now, I'm not speaking of just the matter of well, there was the women and the Native Americans and Africans and so on and so forth. No, 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 no. Even for the common white literate man, a government of, by, and for the people was short-lived and constantly being usurped. And by who? Well, ourselves. Let's go to verse number four. Because oftentimes we treat our government as a different species of people. But that's the thing, though. When you live in a country, when you live amongst a nation, a people of ethnicities, where which governance is indeed a democratic and republican process. And we can debate the re <laughs> how real it is in this country. But when it's all said and done, look throughout history 
when it is indeed from the election, from the will, from the consent, or at the very least, it could be the consensus of the people, exposes, well, the fact that we are not exactly uh, keen about what the true nature of freedom is. For we have a hard time living a life of which does not subscribe to death. Verses 4 through 6. Listen carefully, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a, a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. So, the Lord is recording, he is documenting, he is recognizing our successes. Our flourishing, a very popular word in the secular as well as religious circles, conservative and liberal. He is recognizing our accomplishments. But what is stated, well, it's like a flower. Beautiful. And realistically, a flower is one of a kind. Each flower is one of a kind when you look at the genetic structure as well as the fact that really just the mathematical and quantum me mechanical realities of which for any organism to exist. Each and every flower blooming is a miracle. Alas, but that is the work of the Lord. But what is the thing that we have to swallow and set our minds to and, and, and reflect on? Flowers come and they go. And some, they last but a part of a day. And that is the glory of man. It comes and it goes. A blink in history. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. And that has been indeed the nature of even the great American ex, ex, you know, experiment. Excuse me. A government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Except what happens when the people no longer want the truth. when they choose death over life, when they love evil instead of righteousness. What happens when the criticism for our government is, well, it's often well warranted? But how often is there a reflection of our, our own lives and the state of our households? I've mentioned this time and time again. And I will continue to do so. It is my historical thesis that governments in general, particularly that from those of more democratic and republican practices, where leaders are chosen by the people at large for a variety of reasons, but nevertheless chosen. And that has actually taken place throughout all of history since ancient times. I mean, all you got to do is just look at 1 Samuel, and there you go. Even the, even the Israelites chose a king, chose a man over the Lord God. Even during a time where they were in relative peace, and they weren't really lacking anything. But that's the thing. They wanted what? Prestige. A greater sense of safety and security be recognized to have renowned status in the world. And the cost? <laughs> well, it's in spite of the warnings of the prophet, everything. 
but it goes to show what was going on in their hearts, in their households. What were the, the topics of conversation? What was their family, their kinsmen, their communities, their tribes? What were they pursuing in their nation that had been secured by their dwelling place, the Lord, for all their generations? I ask the same thing here to my countrymen and the world at large, especially here in the West. For democratic, republican, constitutional governments are not the norm. The peoples, the nations, the ethnic groups of which that have erected such is, well, using scientific terms, a mutation. For you see glimpses of it. You see a Experiments and attempts throughout the historical record, but it has indeed been for the last few centuries that such a strong, consistent attempt amongst so many people has been made. Alas, it is cut down in the evening and withers. Verse 7 through 9. And I've said it before, and why? What's the reason? Why is everything we do so short-lived? Pride. Pride. Here's the thing about pride. Sodomy is unnatural sexual activity. The Lord despises so much it warrants the death penalty, just like adultery, according to the old law. So when the Lord says he hates adultery, fornication, including divorce, he, he means it. And why? The perversion of all that is good, from individuals to the families, to their nations at large. And for what? Personal gratification. Everyone pursuing what is right in their own eyes, even to others' detriments. As a result, seven through nine, for we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. You ever notice that, that throughout history, that there's more of the quote unquote negative, the bad news, the cons about human society, politics, ec economics, religious organizations, families, communities tend to be, well, not in good light now, is it? Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. And it says so much more for Christ and even the prophets, as well as the apostles. I've stated this more time and time again, that the secret things will be exposed and made known. And thus, thus we will not have much to glory in, in the long term. For former President Lincoln was true to his word when he said how people would forget the things being said during that day. After all, how many youth, especially amongst those that we call Gen Alpha, know of the name of Abraham Lincoln, are aware of the fact that he was a president or any major accomplishments or events that took place during his lifetime. Eventually we are all forgotten, for better or worse. But it is because of our rebellion against the way that the truth and the life. And, but still, though, all is not in despair. That is, of course, you put your faith in, of, by, and for the people. 
Court numbers will not save you. Verses 10 through 12. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. That's seventy. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. You see, even back then, living past seventy wasn't unheard of. Eleven, who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. And what should be our response? What should be our response as a, as a, you know, as a nation, as a people? Verse 12, so teach us to number our days. To recognize, yes, we flourish, we prosper, we accomplish so many different things and the lord notices but what makes it so vain so um, so lackluster it's short sweet and oftentimes and in the end when it's all said and done has no point so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom and what is wisdom? Applying the understanding of what we know. Properly, righteously applying the understanding, so knowing good from evil, right from wrong, true from false, left from right, etc., etc., based on what we've learned, what we know. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And as an advocate for homeschooling, here's the thing. If all the generations present in a household, in a co-op, in a homeschool community, umbrella, wherever it may be, if all generations are not applying this verse together, it is being done improperly. For homeschooling is the informal education not just the young bloods, but the older as well. All together in sharing life and the fact that what their days are numbered. And even and even men all die of natural causes. They die. It comes to an end. So thus we together grow in our knowledge understanding of what is right, what is wrong, and we apply our hearts unto wisdom. For it is the grace and the mercy of our Lord that makes life so worthwhile living, that we can have, by salvation through the resurrection of the Son, abundant eternal life starting today. That So then, even if on this side of heaven our days are numbered, it shall continue. New life. A life of which makes, well, not everything that we've done here meaningful. But it doesn't just go into the flames. It is made new to a precious thing forever. Verse 13, Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. What's being asked here? Return, O Lord, how long? How long shall we stay in the dust? How long shall we be dead? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. So please, please, do not just leave us to die. But you look around us. You see society and cultures t t today scrambling to old men and women. And I've got nothing against elders, but quite frankly, our leadership, especially the, those leading us from the front, eh, they should have few, fewer number of years attached to, to them with a little more vigor. 
more sense of direction on both sides of the aisle, preferably in the third parties. We definitely need those. And women. In case you forgot, I am fairly sexist. I'm against third wave feminism, second wave feminism, and I'm no less against the first. I'll be doing a blog post and a talk in the future. Oh yes, I do have a blog. Edify by the word dot blogspot dot com. Additional information is about roughly every other day. Four times a week, three, four times a week. Anyways. So how long? How long shall we just be dead? Because that's the thing, too. We've invited as a country, because, well, nation, that's a, that's a word that I can say that we can't quite use anymore. We are a grand multitude of nations. We've been for quite some time. But this country, we've been confused about the nature of life and death where we've invited materialism well when you're dead that's it the end and then there's reincarnation transmigration of the eastern mystics new age movements well people die they come back and it's actually quite a harsh if not gross joke because well even those who have lived in high status, too much bad karma, you and, and, and you get demoted. So people come in and come out. Any wonders that there's a kind of a amongst Eastern mystics, there's a little bit of a neutrality with things like transgenderism amongst others. Well, think about it. Reincarnate, do you necessarily say the same species or sex? <laughs> so, there's an implication there. And then there's also, as well, as those who, who, who don't believe in heaven or hell, or just don't believe in hell. But regardless, it's all this foolishness. But here's the thing, you live once, you die once, just don't die twice. Because the second death is the full-blown wrath of God, the full-blown final judgment. Where everybody who has not repented, who has not received his grace, gets comeuppance. I don't know what it is about people. Either we're in despair because we die. That shows you where their relationship with the Lord is. Or we try to pretend. I remember back in graduate school. So imagine people in their 20s and 30s, mostly. 20s and 30s. Talking about how well you see religion isn't as big of a deal anymore. Because people don't die as frequently. People don't witness people dying as frequently. A, that's not true for many parts of the world. And B, every single person dies. So all you're saying is it's easier to ignore the reality of mortality. Talk about illusions. Life is no illusion. We make life vain, but it's no illusion. Injustice, wickedness, that is not a concept or invention of our imaginations. In fact, we're, we try to imagine those away all the time. Verse 13, Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. 
where you can still find satisfaction, you can still find joy in this life. It won't be made perfect and complete until the next one. But there is need the blessed comfort and guidance of His Holy Spirit according to the very, the very good graces of His Word to be had. Verse 15, Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Back in 1863, Abraham Lincoln made that speech, the Battle of Gettysburg. The war is more than halfway over. It is the first major victory, and there's definitely a few others, but realistically, strategically speaking, especially in regards to uh, public relations and propaganda, just as a matter of morale, Gettysburg was a decisive turning point for the Union for the North. And it was still a bloodbath. So many men to be dead, so many men to die, to be shot, to starve, or succumb to disease in one place. And I find it interesting because he talked about, and you can assume he meant the men on the Union side, the boys in blue die for a nation a new liberty but the reality is I wouldn't be shocked if he was even thinking about those in gray and butternut the men of the south for after all complacency is quite something and that war stirred the many men to reconsider what a government of, by, and for the people meant. And how they were to keep it alive for just a little bit longer. For both sides desired that in some shape or form. I guess even the South for certain I'll be doing blog posts and future talks, Lord willing, on the South, on the Confederacy, on the, on the nature of this war. The history books, well, when you actually read them, you actually study them, you find much more than, than, than what you bargained for. Just don't go by the sound by education. The formal curated Plenty of guardrails, so-called education. You, 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 you know, you, you get. Excuse me. <laughs> Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Conclusion of this chapter of this psalm. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. My dear listeners, pray for the welfare, particularly the spiritual well-being of that of a covenant between the Lord and the next generation. Continue to pray for those of less years. I pray for Generation Z and Alpha. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, for there are indeed. I say indeed, amen, amen. Children, disciples among them. And thy glory unto their children. I speak of also millennials as well. For we have children. Gen X, you still have, you still have children a little older. Boomers and beyond. 
you may have unsaved children. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. The glory of the Lord. That admits a government of and by and for the people that has died. And now continues to wear its red, white, and blue camouflage and continue to, to police, to scam, if not ravish, pillage so many people with a false identity and a false hope. You, Lord, remain true. You, Lord. Verse 1, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Verse 2, before the mountains were brought forth, or even ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Verse 17, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. This isn't a black pilling or a white pilling. This is just reality. This is just the gospel. Do not put your hope in men, the world institutions. Do not put your hope in the sound of my voice or who I am. I am but flesh and bone, but a soul, a mind, a spirit that in need of redemption. For I, too, was on the path to death. And everything I did, and everything I said, would have been all for naught. And all the vain things that I have said since my salvation, all the evil things I've done, thank the Lord for, for giving me and setting me right, for giving me and setting me right. I'm going to tell you something I'm going to be teaching more on. If you want to get to learn more about it, I did a special on the gospel. It's one of my, it's one of my older works. Check it out. So those who are in Christ, who are new creations, we are no longer sinners but saints. We do not live to, to, to commit evil but to perform righteous works. And what's the mark of a saint? A humble, contrite, broken, repentant heart that desires to turn away from what was and to go to what should be, and it is. And why? Verse 17, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, for the Lord is good, he is just, he is merciful. Let that beauty be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. That my acts, not because of my merit, not because of my intelligence, of my wisdom, of my strength, of my goodness. Because of the beauty of the Lord. That is the beauty of the Lord. Power. Power exuded through righteousness. Through truth. A strength. A glory. That doesn't just say what he believes. But does it to the death. Amen, amen. So with that said, do not put your trust in governments of, by, and for the, for the people, for they shall perish. As a whole, we perish in our sins. And thus, we need our Lord, our Savior, the Messiah, Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, to come back and reign over us. But until then, be faithful. And yea, the work of our hands established thou it. This is Christian M.C. Fulmer, signing out.